Hello guys, welcome back to Let's Supreme Ghost Thief 2X. We're up to mission 12 today, the cure. So let's get right to it. Let's watch the briefing. Kadar back to Malak's castle in the dead of night. After avoiding the tight security in the hotel, it felt almost too easy slipping past the guards. The sheriff really should be more careful. Kadar has regained consciousness, if that's the word. Sometimes I can catch a glimpse of my old cousin behind the metal mask, but most of the time he is changed, foreign to me. Malak has been busy while I was away, gathering information. It's amazing how much he has dug up in such a short time. Turns out there still might be something I can do for Kadar. There is a cure, Malak tells me, hidden in the bowels of a ruined hospital in a part of the city that lies behind the barricades. The old hospital was run by an order of healers from a faraway land, but when the barricades were erected by the hammers in order to prevent the entire city from being overrun by and dead, the hospital was closed off from the rest of the city, and has been inaccessible ever since. The healers, who served a deity called Amaris, possessed a powerful relic, a set of scales, which granted them the ability to cure even the most fatal disease, and it is rumored, in some cases, even to raise the dead. Malak believes that these scales may help Kadar, so I must find them. Once inside, I must be prepared to deal with the undead. Malak knows that the hospital is haunted, but he couldn't tell me more than that. But that doesn't change anything. I'll find the scales and get the hell out of there. I thought I'd never see Kadar again. And now I have a chance to save him. I must not fail him this time. So, it's time to go find ways to rescue or to, I guess, release Kadar from his uh, imprisonment. Um, the Cure. So, make your way through the ruined city and find an entrance to the abandoned hospital. The scales of Amaris are your only hope of saving Kadar. Find them. Now, when I played this mission the first time, um, when I heard scales of Amaris, I thought it was like scales, like reptile scales. I don't think I saw the last image or didn't pay attention to it, at least in the briefing. So I didn't realize that they were scales that you weigh things on. So those are what we're going to have to find. That's the main objective. Malak has told you that the priest and priestess of the hospital each kept a precious stone as a symbol of their faith. Find both of them. So those are both worth loot. Uh, and I think this objective is only there on expert. Once you've completed your other objectives, get back to the city gate. There is one other objective that will spawn, that we will complete, um, once we read something. <clears throat> and uh, that will actually uh, dictate my order of doing things a little bit, because I want to do that objective in a certain order. So we'll get to that. Uh, so this is a mission. This is a good mission. Um, I enjoy it. It is well designed. It has um, a nice, spooky, eerie atmosphere to it. And um, it's got a very nice story, good backstory, both from the Hamrites and the healer's perspective. Um, unfortunately, though, it's a little bit too easy. There are, um, th there's no individual scenario that is very difficult. We just, it's just sneaking, just a lot of sneaking. It's cool, it's, it's different looking, it's unique. But yeah, it's a little bit on the easier side, I would say. So, but that shouldn't really deter anybody, really, unless they're, they're ghosting. I mean, you can, you can go at this mission from multiple angles. It's, it's, it's non-linear in a certain way. It's not nearly as non-linear as the Grand Hotel was. But uh, it's, it's well-designed. 
but a little bit bare and a little bit easy in some areas. So um, it is, after all, the 12th out of 13 missions, so you do expect that the the difficulty level is sort of at the peak right now, but it's not in this mission, unfortunately. But it's a good mission, don't get me wrong. So, um, we don't need to buy anything, obviously. We can't for Supreme. Uh, however, items carry over from this mission into mission 13, the last one. Um, and there might be a need for a concealment potion in the 13th mission. Um, I don't think we're going to need it, so I'm not going to buy it. But we are going to need, most probably, to use a couple of water arrows to douse torches in mission 13. So if you don't want to do that, if you rather want to just hide yourself and don't care about the, the potions, of course that'll make the, the run a, a chemical success for regular ghosts. And it isn't allowed for even su for Supreme to drink any potions, but but here it is. So that's the only way to get a hold of a concealment potion for mission 13. If you want it, you have to buy it now before this mission. Okay, let's make a real save. And a quick save and look at our map. So this map here is the outside of the hospital. So the hospital is to the north here. We start in the east and there are a few buildings that are open here that we can get into, but most of this area outside is fairly empty. Um, there are some corpses, but they are not sleeping zombies. There are two patrolling zombies around a pool here. This is the courtyard, the, the south courtyard outside the main entrance. There's a gate here, but this, this is open for us to go through. And then this is the only map we have of the hospital grounds where the uh, main entrance is right here. Uh, you cannot go in through the main entrance. Um, so you have to access the hospital from one of the flanks here. There are a couple of balconies. There are some rooms that will be exposed once you get in there, but there's sort of a main hallway that goes east-west upstairs. You can get downstairs in the south in one area, and this these areas are downstairs as well. There is a noble wing on the west side, and these two areas are large backyard courtyards with a dividing wall or a building actually here in the middle. You can move a little bit to the northwest. Northeast is blocked off because there's a building that's fallen. So it is it is a ruined hospital, but and you'll see that from the interior if you haven't played the mission before. But most of the areas are accessible to us. This is the temple where we can find the scales. And there is a moat around that temple, a bridge here, but there's uh, water, and the two towers for the priest and the priestess, the priestess is on the west, are here. Um, yeah. So we'll get to some details as the map gets revealed as we get inside here. Okay, so you can see there is a um, patrolling zombie up there. I don't think he can see us from down here. We can head in here first. All right, so in here there is a piece of loot, a silver nugget worth 50, and in this chest there is a mine. Nothing up on the rafters here. Oh yeah, there is. There's a rope arrow stuck in it, but not on top of the rafters. There is a rope arrow, but we have rope arrows. We have two. Okay. So in this, you have, is it, there's a water arrow here, isn't there? Yeah, right there. One water arrow. Now this door is not op operable the patroller that we saw inside. Over here there's another door there that isn't operable. This is not a sleeping zombie by the way. Here you can see into the the courtyard uh, to the south of the hospital. So the hospital main entrance is right there. So 
So in here, come to a building that's um, this building right here. We're not going to go this way, but I just wanted to show you. So we'll approach that from the other side. We're going to go in here. Here's a moss arrow. And we have to... Rope arrow up here. <gasps> Over here is just a cup. It looks like it's an item you can pick up, but it's not. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that zombie to go and leave. We must get to the bottom of this, lest our superiors hear of it. <gasps> so there were three hamrites here. I was hoping to trigger that a little bit more controlled. But we need to get to the bottom of this, lest our superiors hear of it. So the Hammerites are trying to investigate something, probably something relating to the healers. So this is a little tower here. I like this tower. Fortunately, it's not bigger than this. And there's a goblet here worth 15 total, 65. Let's read this book. Volume 3, Entry 1. This morning I received a message. One of the healers from the other side of town, Sendor, hath discovered some sort of artifact there. He hath asked for our help. Strange it seemeth that he would write to us the hammers. These healers seemeth to value secrecy. I can say that they seem to like us when we questioned them upon their arrival uh, all those weeks ago. And I can't help admit the feeling is mutual. I have long suspected they are up to some type of mischief. I've heard they have erected statues of some sort. Could they be religious? Pagan, perhaps? Or is it possible they worship that heathen god, Linjala? Perhaps this Sendor has come to his senses and will give us license to terminate their activities. Volume 3, Entry 2. It seemeth that the hospital is plagued by foul undead. Many of the recently deceased do return from their graves to haunt the healers. We must act swiftly. I have commandeered the local tavern and gathered here with my brethren to make final plans before storming the gates. It maketh me despair... Uh, how arrogant these healers are. That priestess, when we questioned her before, she dared tell us that we are the one who do not understand. That we does not understand their ways and their, they does not practice the black arts. Um, oh, we understand that only too well how clever words and hollow phrases can twist the minds of the weak. I regret that we have waited so long to act. No good shall ever come of irreligion, even if it doth take it the guise of a healer. Okay. wait for him again. Over there is a green diamond and dewdrop as well. I'm not going to take dewdrop in this mission. I don't know if she has a purpose here. Let me know if she does. But Or he. Dewdrop is he, isn't it? A little boy doll, I think. So that one is worth 100. Green diamond. Follow him. And I think we can wait here. So that's where we started the mission. This chest is pickable and has a water arrow. Kind of think it's cool that it has a water arrow because the water is dripping into it. Here's a wine bottle next to a wine rack that doesn't have any loot in it. You have it. Go through the trouble of making a wine rack, then put a bottle of, of expensive wine in there at least. So total 215. We're going to watch a ghost here. So, the door got open now, but we don't have to close it, because we... We didn't open it this time, so we'll just leave that open. So this is actually the room we looked into from below earlier. 
Okay, I'm not sure why I couldn't mantle there, because I want to go this way right now. <sighs> so here are two hanging corpses. Kind of morbid. So we are now southeast of the hospital. That's the hospital you can see there. Now, this is a long hallway. Sort of makes the inside of the wall that separates the hospital. And there is um, an apparition that walks there. I'm not going to go in there, but I wanted to get this <gasps> blue or teal diamond. <gasps> But I don't want to have to sneak past that <clears throat> patroller there. So that diamond was worth uh, another 100. That's also not a sleeping zombie. Okay, now, when we walk past or through this hole here, there are some hammerite ghosts that are going to spawn and attack the main gate here. And they will make a lot of noise. And that patroller up there might alert to that, so we can time it so that it doesn't alert. Come, my brother, swing together! Bring down this wretched waste of existence! Oh. Yeah. It did not alert to that right now. Even if it had, I guess it wouldn't have been a bust for us. But you might have seen... Another specter inside the gate there. I think that's supposed to be the priestess. You can see her in a couple of different areas in the mission. So we are now in the area south of the hospital courtyard. So we're still outside the hospital grounds here. And we can actually get caught here by that apparition. Again, not a sleeping zombie. Uh, up here you can see the little uh, puffs of smoke coming through the floor there. Up here is a gas arrow. So, how are gas arrows useful against undead, you might say? Well, remember that with the catalyst, you can turn it into a combustion arrow. And uh, around an open flame, that will turn into basically a, a huge explosive fire arrow uh, that travels faster. So that's very useful if you're not ghosting. So now, this is the pub. I can't remember if there's a sign or something, but this is supposed to be the pub, I think. Here's a spider egg that you don't really need. Um, I'm not going to go up this way. Uh, and I'll show you why. Up here. Once you go into this room, it doesn't matter how slow you go. You get caught by this zombie, but... But it's not a sleeping zombie. So I'm not sure why it gives that alert when it can't wake up. And it only gives that one alert. It doesn't give any other alerts here, so... Yeah, I'm not sure why that is, but I... It seems more like a scripted alert. So 
we're instead gonna mantle up here. Oh. Read this. My suspicions have been confirmed. Behind their smiling masks, the healers are no better than pagans. They have been dabbling in necromancy. They hath raised the dead, making a mockery of the builder's work. My hand tremble as I write this. Such is my anger. So this is why they have no desire to convert people to their faith. This is why they have been so passive. They have feared that we would learn the truth. But now we have discovered it, and shall act. By the builder they will realize their mistake. Okay. I want to hide over here. That's the room into that zombie that I didn't want to trigger. And then this spider patrols between these two rooms. We're on the second floor of the pub right now. So that candlestick was worth 35, total 350. I'm going to go up here. <gasps> this is has a mine in it. And if we go into the other room, it's easier to use the attic to do that. There's a bottle of wine right there. Let's see, it can be a little bit difficult to get down here. There is, um, you see a broadhead arrow in the floor there, and there is also an urn on the right that we need to take, and then we can leave, probably through the opening there, to be honest with you. Oh! Bumped my head into the ceiling there, I didn't anticipate that. There we go. Good. Nice. So we took the urn there. Total 420. So now we can head west. Again, not a sleeping zombie, this. Mantle over here. Over here in the corner is a moss arrow. But more importantly, there is a silver nugget for us. Total 470. Head in here. Easiest way to get up here is just a rope arrow. Like that. There's a ring. This is where that apparition patrols. It's the east side of it. It's just stone. So that way you don't ever have to go into that hallway with that patroller. That's just a little bit too risky. So that ring was worth 54 of all things. 524. Okay. So here... 
we have in the pool here, there are two water arrows, if you're interested in getting all those items. These two zombies are a little bit difficult to gauge properly. So they seem to be coming this way. That looks familiar. Linjala? But Moloch told me that the healers worshipped a deity called Amaris. Could they be one and the same? So I think she's referring to that statue right there, because it usually triggers when you go into the water. I didn't do that. Now here's the book. This is the main entrance. Let's read that. Account of Alinea, Priests of the Healers. Week 1. We arrived late at night. The clouds had filled burst and sea had finally burst, and sea and sky were as one, but there were no lack of people in the harbor. It seems this place never sleeps. We were greeted by a delegation of Hammerites, the religious order we had been expecting. The advice of the goddess proved valuable. We met their aggressive inquiries the way she told us. We spoke the truth and told the Hammerites that we had come to help their city. They seemed confused when they realized that we did not seek to convert anyone to our faith, and that we only sought to help those in need. Their high priest was very hostile, a hard, rough man by the name of Barthold. Week 2. Goddess, save us. Having only docked but one week ago, we already had to lie to the Hamrites. Linjala, it seems, is a figure tantamount to the god of their pagan enemies. It seems that any belief d that does not align with their faith is viewed as heresy by them. These ignorant men will stop at nothing to convert others to their religion, and they seem to crush anyone who stands in their way. For now, we must travel under the guise of Amaris, the lesser healer, lest we become the victims to this ignorance. That name is unknown to them, and consequently, if we may be safe, uh, we may be safe if only for a little while. Week 5. Having searched every nook and cranny of Old Quarter, we may have finally stumbled upon a building that will suit our needs. The people here are poor, desolate, and desperate. In many ways, this vacant building still reflects that hopelessness. Most of the buildings in the area are too small, too ruined, or otherwise inhabited by squatters and the homeless. What have the Hammerites done to better uh, the people of this city? If these streets reflect the conditions in the city, there is truly no hope in the Hammerite way. Week 7. We have moved into the ruin. I cannot speak as to why it was abandoned, but it looks to have been a school for magicians, or mages, as they are called on the shore. Many of the others were against it, fearing some vague superstition, but no matter. No matter its purpose in the past, we shall rebuild it as the hospital we envisioned. We are healers. If we can mend flesh and bone, and even mind, we can also heal the wood and stone of these old halls. Amaris will guide our hands, and it will be done. So now we got a new objective. Uh, find out what happened to the hospital by locating the rest of Alinea's diary. So there are four parts to the diary. We have read the first one here, and I'm going to try to read them in order so we get sort of the story a little bit more connected. Um, let's make a real save here. So the intended way to get in through this gate is by... Now he sees me, so I'm not going to actually do this, but I'm going to show you what happens when you turn this wheel here. Most of the corpses that were outside the grounds now have woken up. And they are patrolling. And then you have these floating skulls here that we're actually going to see more of inside the compound afterwards. Um, these floating skulls, or floating heads, are what was described in 
The Art of Deception, which was mission... Was that mission 8? There was a readable there that described them as soul elementals. I couldn't remember them from this mission when I played that, but these are definitely it. And they are quite unique enemies. They're new enemies. If they see you, they will alert, they will shoot at you. But then, if you move into them, they actually physically touch you, then we can see what actually happens. <coughs> see, then they suddenly spawn directly over a corpse, and they resurrect the corpse, and then the corpse will turn into a zombie and go after you. The zombies, of course, are much easier to deal with than the soul elementals themselves. But that's kind of a neat effect. I don't think I've seen that in any other fan mission but this. So you spawn a couple of those, and normally a soul elemental is linked to one or more corpses. So if they trigger that resurrection, then all of the associated corpses will, will automatically turn into zombies then. So we're, of course, not going to do that. So instead, we are going to move uh, towards the west here and uh, work our way over this wall in a different manner. But I wanted to come over here to get the Alinea, Alinea diary. I want to get that extra objective there. So we have to wait for this. It's got to come by here. So, um, I kind of wish that all these extra patrollers would also trigger once you get the scales. Because then it would be a lot harder to leave. It would kind of be an extra nice challenge. But they don't. It's still the same. The same two patrollers out here. Gonna move over here to this end. This is a gate that uh, you can lean through there, and then you can see the lever on the inside. You can pull the lever and get in this way. I'm not gonna do that because I don't feel that that's the intended way, and it's sort of a semi semi uh, engine exploit. They're gonna do this. <gasps> Move up here. And this is, of course, a perfectly legal way to take in. Frame rate is dropping a little bit here because there's a lot of stuff going on. Or see a pretty great distance. So that actually triggers our objective to get inside the gates. This must be it. The way in. So we are going to drop down to this balcony right here. There. When you go inside, you cannot prevent this from happening, but many of the lights turn on, and you hear that big thump. Now, that's not an, uh, a Busta Supreme. Only removing light sources would be. So adding light sources, and it's just a scripted event. It's not like you're doing anything. It can be prevented. <clears throat> so... Now we are inside. So we are now right in here. In a room just inside this balcony. And here's a book. Last night, one of the new ones, the young, uh, strong lad Rhinus, spoke while suffering from a heavy fever. It was most remarkable. He whimpered, Don't tell them. Please don't tell them. They mustn't know. They wouldn't help me. There was nothing I could do. The builder says that lying is a terrible sin, but I had to do it. 
Don't let them find me and take me back. I think we have a hammer among us, but he deserves all the help he can get if he truly has turned his back on those ter terrible people. Maybe I'd better move him to one of the upper halls in case the hammers come back. It would be sad indeed if they recognized him. Okay. So in here there's nothing else. You can hear some sounds here, but there's nobody that comes into this room. Okay, now this room is interesting. Uh, there's another copy of Alinea's diary right on the windowsill right there, and there's a sleeping uh, zombie behind it. Now if you move down here and cross this uh, this uh, the bottom of this staircase, who I assume to be the priestess, will wake up the zombie. And it will start patrolling. It's not a bust. It's not a bust to do that, but um, I don't like that extra patroller, so I'm not going to do this. So, once you cross the line here at the base of the stairs, that script triggers. So we're going to enter that room in a different way. Down here, though, there is a statue. Worth 15, total 539. There's also a piece of loot up top there in a chest. So we'll get there through a window over on the north side. Let's see. This is the kitchen. There's another soul elemental you can see. There's a water arrow in here. I'm going to follow that elemental. Let's read this. The black root bush seems to have an unexpected side effect. Fairlin was furious when he came to see me in the garden today. Apparently one of our patients had, has had some rather strange visions since receiving treatment with black root extract. I promised Fairlin I would look into it. This sounds intriguing, and I look forward to trying the extract myself. Tested the new Balanti tobacco today. The taste is strong and sharp, much like the plants themselves, really. Hallucinated vividly for at least half a bell, mostly heavenly lights and bright flashes accompanied by loud, vaguely unsettling chanting or singing. Felt really hungry afterwards. Had to break open the new batch of Narla grapevine. Woke up after sundown with an enormous appetite. Decided to do some midnight gardening after a healthy meal. Oh, my head, my poor head. The marrow thorn and gold bough are doing better now, and they look uh, set to become strong and healthy if they're not afflicted with the strange withering disease that has already laid waste to the northern part of the garden. Hmm, I better stop for now. Olable is barking madly in the garden. I better go see what he is so upset about. What's that sound? Something moaning? I'll write more, to my, uh, more tonight. go in here before we get spotted. So this is one of the main hallways. There's one further east as well uh, that I talked about. It goes all the way through the entire upper floor of the hospital. There's a small bridge that connects the two, but each of those hallways have a, a soul elemental sort of floating back and forth. And there are multiple corpses in each hallway that will get woken up if you are spotted by them. We're of course not going to get spotted. We're going to take the balcony out here. So this balcony overlooks the courtyard that's in the northwest. So this courtyard. We're not. We're going to get down there in a, in a little bit. Show you something first. <laughs> Up here is a gas arrow. There are about four or five of those gas arrows spread around roofs. And they are very powerful if you use the catalyst on them. Take 
make a statue over here. He didn't hear that. So we're now in the West Garden here. Just want to make sure that I didn't get caught. So that statue was worth 15, total f 554. And here is a moss arrow. You can see that. So the readable there was probably about a lot of the plants that are are long since gone. Those soul elementals give um, haunt gasps when they alert, so that's very easy to hear. So now we came out the window and we are now on the west side of that staircase. So we can now take the piece of loot up here. Purse, worth 55, total 609. should be able to lower ourselves and read this. Account of Alinea, Priestess of the Healers, week 20. So I think the last entry went up to, was it week 7 or 9 or something? So, <coughs> so this is a few months later. Our reconstruction work is going as planned. What a marvelous place this will be. The Hamrites are forever watchful, but if we continue to use the name Amaris, or uh, Amaris, I believe we shall be safe. Let us hope that they ignore the true meaning of the statues we have erected out by the pool and the symbols we have scribed into our walls. Week 22. We have made the most unusual discovery today. Sendor, while digging in the old gathering hall, that is to be our temple, slipped with the pick and impaled his hand. But with the same blow, we uncovered a section of rock used to hide something. What is, um, what is it that was hidden here so long ago? It looked to be a pair of old bronzed scales, ancient and valuable. No sooner did he unearth the strange artifact than it began to glow, and in moments was his hand healed miraculously. We know not the origins of these scales, but if they have such healing power, it can only be a blessing bestowed upon us by the goddess. Week 36. It has been but ten days that the hospital has been fully functional, and already we have witnessed the power of the scales. Today the most remarkable thing happened. A patient who I believe already dead from the black lung has risen from, the, from his bed and left the hospital under his own power. I knew not the true power of the scales. Surely they are a worthy tool of, Amar of Amaris. Uh, but why this man was made whole while others are not, I cannot say. The goddess has not explained this to me. Maybe it is best not to ask such questions. Let us be joyful of this miracle, and may others follow. Week 40. After much hardship, we have opened the, up the back of the hospital as our temple. It took a bit more work than we expected. What appeared to have been a gathering hall before may have in fact been a temple of sorts previously. There were some old pagan markings etched deep within the stone walls there. Could these be the markings of the trickster of whom the hammers speak? Surely not, for he is but a demigod a man with cloven hoofs and a passion for nature. These vile drawings could not be him, unless they are perhaps an earlier representation. But now they are gone, thankfully, and the temple is blessed with the adornments of Amaris. It now possesses our symbols and statues, and is a place of healing and peace. My fellow healers are overjoyed. All save Sendor, strangely, who hasn't ventured back into the temple since he first found the scales. <gasps> to shoot a second rope right here. Let's 
See, this says the West Garden. Okay. All right, so now we're going to head west. Here are the two corpses that are linked to that elemental. So we'll wait for it to come back. Common wing over here. We'll follow him. There's nothing in here except for a flash bomb on the table. Noble wing. Go into one of the side rooms here. Get an urn worth 20. Total 629. I like the detail and the decoration in the rooms here. It really looks abandoned and run down, ruined. So we're now in this hallway. There's a couple of rooms on either side here. So in here, there's a hammer. It's worth 50, total 679. And here's another flash bomb and a purse. Worth 100, total 779. Okay. Out on the balcony. This is the other balcony we were on earlier. I'm not going to head out that way, but I wanted to show you the view. Some cool artwork, too. And here's a medallion. Total 879. Nothing else except for a book. Volume 2, Entry 1. The dead draws near. My dreams are troubled, and I see dark signs and omens wherever I look. Something terrible will happen, and soon. Alinia knows the nature of my dreams, but still, her ears are deaf to my words of warning. She tells me that whatever storm lies in wait in the days to come, we will weather it, and that the harder it hits us, the more shelter we shall provide for the poor people of the city. Oh, must my every word be oil on her already too bright fire? <clears throat> Volume 2, Entry 2. The city is dying. So many have wasted away already, and still others keep coming. Surely Alinea must now see that even the mercy of Amaris and the miracles of the scales won't be enough. We must leave the city or be pulled down with it when it falls. Volume 3, Entry 1. This morning. No, how can I possibly describe what has happened? How can mere words suffice? The dead are rising from their graves, coming back to haunt us. I knew this place was unholy. I knew it the moment that I struck my own hand in the chapel. It is more than just my blood upon my hands now. It is too late, and we cannot get out. If only Alinea had let the Hammerites in when she had the chance. We will die here, trapped like rats in this place of loss. Volume 3, Entry 3. Alinea is dead. Borthold slew her in this rage when he arrived. The hand that struck her down may as well have been my own since I am the one who, that called the Hamrites back here. Why did she not attempt to use the scales? They would have protected her. She knew she would die, and yet did nothing. I ask myself, in her position, would I have used them? Knowing her unholy origin, their unholy origin may have, may have saved my pitiful life? Borthold is outside now. I must go to the cha chapel with him. But he will never have the scales. They are not for him to take. Whatever forces led me to uncover them have trapped us inside this terrible place. We will almost surely die here. Okay. So let's head down here. So we've now worked our way north, and we're in the far northwest. It's another Linjala statue. So that is the entrance to the temple, but you can't open those doors from outside. <gasps> okay. 
Here's a spider egg. So we're now in a, in the building you see on the west side here, just an abandoned building. We can head upstairs. <gasps> An empty room, except for this chest is a blue vase, purple vase, total 929. Okay, now we come to a little bit of a tougher area because we need to get back into the main building here and clean the east side of it. Just wanted to make this round here. I don't know if they saw me there. Yeah, those were not alerts. Zombies don't don't detect you from that distance there. It's not if you go slow. See, they make those sounds. Those are what sometimes can seem like alerts, but they're not. Okay, this is just an engine room. I think you can turn off some lights here, can you? No! Okay, so this I couldn't figure out what operated. If you turn this on, this machine starts running. But I couldn't figure out what it actually did. So if anyone can enlighten me there, if it has any function, that would be great. We're going to head in here now. This is the dining hall or dining room, I think. And this can be a little bit tough. Each of these furnaces, there's a fire arrow. That switch on the wall there operates a light in the main room, but we can't turn off lights for Supreme. This guy has only two positions. Take that bottle. Worth 50 total, 979. He comes back here and stations himself right here. We have to head up the whole uh, ceiling there.
<sighs> Good. Did not get caught there. I have to be a little bit quick to get back up here. So now we're back up in the room that we sort of arrived in there. So we have now made a full circle. Down here, and then through the courtyard, and back up again to this room. So now we can tackle the east side and the temple. So this is the bridge that sort of forms one of the main entrances. down here first. So this is the east balcony that can take you in just like the way we came in. And in the shelf here there are two large coin pairs. Total 1019. Okay, we'll get to this area in a little bit. I want to go in here first. So this is a boarded up uh, doorway that you can obviously go through pretty easily. Um, that is one of the main ways of getting in, so we could have gone in there. The only thing of interest in here, though, is basically a goblet over here. Worth 15, total 1034. Yeah, there's, um, there's a moss arrow too right over there. That's it. Nothing else up here, I think, although I haven't checked, but I don't think so. <clears throat> so over here we have, this is not a sleeping zombie. Here is a healing potion, but also a rug. Um, worth um, 70, totally, total 1104. Now this door can't be picked open or forced open. You can't open it by switching this. But we will release a soul elemental then that is linked to, I think, at least this corpse. Maybe the corpse in here too. We're going to have to back up a little bit quickly here. Because it will start patrolling. Oh, I landed. on that little piece of wood there in the room that it came from. Take a ring. And we can close the door. Wait, what? Did it hear the... Did it hear the door? Maybe it did? Well, now it didn't, for sure. So we got the ring. That ring was worth uh, 100, total 1204. Let's save here. Okay, in this room, it's been a massacre, basically. In this room, we can actually head up here first. <gasps> can find the mission's only real secret. It's a gas arrow in here. That also takes you up to the rafters above the kitchen. There's nothing else of interest up here, but that's it at least.
and that can take you into the East Garden. Yeah, East Garden. And here is the third out of four parts of Alenia's diary. Account of Alenia, Priestess of the Healers, week 56. Fall is rapidly approaching, and I fear it may be dark. The Hammerites have heard wild rumors about our work. They seem to believe that we are performing resurrections, calling the dead back. But they do not understand. I hold little hope that we shall be able to explain it. At the very least, they will attempt to run us out of the city. Week 59. More dark news. An unknown wasting disease is spreading like wildfire in the city. Already people are lining up in the streets outside our gates. We have trouble just helping those already in our care. How can we hope to do anything for thrice that number? Oh, Amaris, help these people. We are too few and do not possess your wisdom. Week 62. The Hammerites appeared at the gates today, but unlike the many sick and dying people gathered outside, they sought neither solace nor counsel. Alas, they are indeed determined to shut down the hospital, and none of our arguments seem to touch them. How can they be so indifferent to the suffering of others? They were only a company of four, apparently residents of the district, but they were determined to get inside. We had to lock the doors to prevent them from hurting anyone. When the Hammerites attempted to break the gates, something extraordinary happened. My wind became clouded, and though scarcely conscious, I saw some strange force bellow forth magically from the ground and smashed the doors back towards the Hammerites. They scattered like rag dolls as the iron gates blew them backwards. Bruised and broken from the impact, they retreated, vowing to return with Borthold, the high priest. It was not until the others approached me that I realized I was gripping the scales tightly in my hands. What could this mean? I must pray to Amaris to guide me in the dark days ahead. So it seems maybe like the scales have a power that healers couldn't really control. Okay. So here's the safe, obviously, and this is something that isn't counted as a secret, but there is a... See the lever back there? In it, you have a blue diamond, and you have a spider egg. So that blue diamond is actually the... Um, the priest's precious stone. It's one of the two stones that you have to pick up. It's worth 100. And then there is a silver nugget right here. <gasps> so we are now in the East Garden here, um, just south of the East Main Hallway. Wait for that elemental to come back. And here's a rotted arrow and a healing potion over there. See it in the far right, in the middle section, is a healing potion. That's all there is in that um, in that hallway. There's nothing to read. So now we're on the east balcony. We're gonna head up here. So here there's another gas arrow. Now, in between those hallways, there's a bridge that we haven't been to. Underneath, you have access to an indoor garden right here. Uh, but it's very brightly lit. You can get seen by both soul elementals in either of the side hallways. And there's a third elemental patrolling downstairs. So that is a very difficult place to get down to. So I'm going to use a little bit more stealthy approach. But up here we have to go slow because it's uh, roof tiles.
Let's use a rope here. You can't shoot a rope in the side, but you can in the top. Have to wait for that guy to go away. <gasps> there we go. Now we can continue along the eve of the hospital here. So that indoor garden has these roof um, boarded off. Uh, Skylights, but there's one here that's open. Silently. This is the one that I said was difficult. You can see how brightly lit that room out there is. This is the indoor garden. It's a readable, and there's a piece of loot in here. Gold candlestick and a book. Planted four steelberry bushes in the mosaic garden. The winter will be hard on them, but they are tough. I'm sure they'll be fine. The night lion is growing uncontrollably, though. The soil must be richer than it seems. If it goes on like this, I'll have to move it to a less shady place so that the sun can keep it in check. This is an exit, but this is pickable, and I don't want to pick it open. You cannot relock it. So that's why I didn't want to take that entry either. <sighs> okay, so to go back, we now need to head back to the east courtyard. <gasps> the candlestick was worth of twenty five, so we should have thirteen seventy nine, yes. Do that. <sighs> if we go to the other side, we should be able to. <sighs> I didn't know. I did not know that was an actual sleeping zombie. I guess it was. One of the few. here. This is... W no, it's tile. The top is tile. That's why. Okay. <gasps> Do that. in here. This has a rope arrow, by the way. So that's the entrance or exit from the inner garden right there. Locking mechanism is pickable. Head into this abandoned house. It's a goblet. That's all of interest. Head over 
here. Unless you can mantle over. I'm not sure if you could do that in Old Dark. 100% actually. But you can. In this version at least. So here we can shoot a rope. And head up to the tower. Or the two towers. <gasps> This is the priest's tower. An empty chest. Readable. Alinea remains strong, but my courage seeps from me as blood from a wound. We are surrounded on all sides, the undead within, the Hamrites without, both seeking to bring both seeking to bring death to our vision and our lives. I have denied the Hamrites opportunity to profit from their aggression and greed. The precious Tanktic gem has been hidden safely in the darkness of the garden. They will find naught in this tower, but the humble furnishings of a simple priest in the service of others. So that's the gem that we took then in the safe, the Tanktic gem. The Hammerites, Hammerites must have breached the walls by now, so I await them in the knowledge that in Lanjala's sovereign will, evil must triumph over peace for this brief moment. I do not question or plan, but only await my promised reward for fruit, for faithful service in her care. I hear shouting in the courtyard, yet not the sound of metal on metal, as in a true battle. More the sound of hellish slaughter as flesh is met with iron hammer. It's no consolation that the sickening sound of crunching bone could just as well be undead as it could be my brothers and sisters. In the end, all here will be laid to waste under the grinding force of the hammer and the howl of the damned. Curse this wretched shore on which we have met our fate. It's pretty grim. Oh yeah. So if we head down here, then this is another entry to this tower. But it requires us to pick open this door, which I don't want to do. Takes us to the moat around the temple. And this is actually the intended exit. I don't think you can actually jump over here. a ghost inside that heard me. I'm gonna head over here. Yet another gas arrow. very loud here. I don't like that, but it's pretty far away from everybody, so I don't think they can hear it. So this is the priestess's tower. There's no way to enter this by any other means than this way. You can see it from below, so that maybe gives you a hint. Here is the second gemstone. So that is a blue diamond worth 100. So we have taken both stones. Account of Alinea, Priestess of the Healers. Week 70, the situation is grave. The number of dead is now so great that it is no longer possible for Miljar to consecrate all the bodies in the Atrium of Ascension. He knows all well, uh, as well as I that the proper con consecration is of utmost importance. But what can he do? I agree we cannot stop taking in patience and that the dead have to be buried before too long. Our only choice is to reduce the time each body lies in the atrium by half, maybe even more. But I am troubled. I fear this may prove to have dire consequences. Week 71. The epidemic has now spread through the entire district, and the Baron has ordered that the gates be closed. This means that the wealthier districts will be isolated from the rest of the city. What of our shipments from Dayport? How will we now get supplies through? I see now how precarious our situation is, and how few allies we have in this cold place. Why will the scales no longer heal? Ever since that night with the Hammerites, it's as if they have lost their power. Stranger still, I can't seem to keep them in one place. Every morning when I wake, no matter how tightly I lock them up, they appear in our temple, as if somehow summoned there by an unknown force. Week 77. 
The dead are rising against us. The ground is erupting and graves all over the cemetery are opening and spilling forth dead men, women and children. All of them are former patients. We are all terrified, huddled together in the upper halls. While a few brave people have gone in search of the ones who are missing, patients and healers alike. I fear this might be the end. We cannot get out. The gate is held back or held by dark beings. If we could only get someone outside and into the city to find help. Even the Hammerites would be welcome now. We could explain to them, no, we most likely could not, but at least they could rid the place of this terrible curse, whether or not they understand us. They would punish us, of course, but no, I cannot think clearly. My mind is clouded. The sounds, the screams. We must find a way to get help. Week 80. The Hammerites have come to Old Quarter. We must let them in. They are our only hope now. Perhaps they can vanquish the scales and the horrors, horror they have wrought. Why, oh why, Amaris, did you allow us to believe they were for the purposes of good? From my tower here I can see the wildfires burning and the living running from the undead beings that walk the earth. The ruined buildings here are collapsing. The fires are burning out of hand. The level of horror and death on the streets below I cannot begin to describe. This is hell, let loose upon the earth. I fear no one, not even I, will make it out alive. Soon the city will be overrun with the undead and whatever hell we have unleashed will be inescapable. So that also completes finding out the complete story of what happened to the hospital. Okay. So now we should be able to drop here. We didn't get I heard we didn't get spotted here. Okay. So I am actually going to grab a crate. See, over here, you have a water arrow. You can see that. <gasps> now, this is the way you're supposed to leave here. So, this is the temple. Those must be the scales. So, those are the scales right there, around the corner. There is one apparition over there now. I'm not going to worry about him too much at this point. There is a secret in here that I want to get the count for, for Supreme, because we can get it. It's nice to maximize secret count for that mode if we can do it. That's what I'm going to do. So we'll spend some time doing this right now. Two crates, and we need one other smaller object. So I think we'll need to take one of the pieces of the broken statue in there or something. I didn't test this in my... in my test run, so... <gasps> We're going to have to return the crates before we actually take the scales because there are going to be enemies released when we take them. Uh, we are going to make a little stack here, and it is on a patrol route, but the patrol is not active yet. So it isn't a patrol route currently. So I think we are good. It's only if there are current enemies patrolling that you can't make a stack. Let's 
grab that one. I think that's... I think this should be enough to get us up there. we got a mantle up here. There's no rope attachable area there. So here's a fire arrow. Offices of Thief 2X enter at your own risk. So we found a secret. So that actually doesn't count in the end stats. Well, it does. It says two, but it's out of one. So it doesn't count as what the game registers as secrets. But we still get the count for it. So that's kind of cool. So this is an Easter egg, of course. So Gonshong. Uh, deck. Fet. So these are all part of the design team for Thief 2X. Okay, this isn't funny anymore. Where the hell are my desk and my two couches? They even stole my documents. Ha, I'll just sit here till they come back. They almost, they always come back, mostly. So this is uh, Ryan, I guess. Rain. Get back to that one. Then we have Avalon. Here's a readable too. Whoops. If you're reading this, I guess that means I should have done some work on Mission 4. Should do some work on Mission 4. Okay. So switch here. It opens up a panel. Flash this one with some uh, bodies. Okay, so I'll show you Ryan's room too. So in here is just a bunch of food. There's like uh, eight apples, three cucumbers, two loaves, three cheeses. And there is a diary as well. Great, now my desk is in the way. What's with all this food? You can't keep me here, you know? Ah well, not like they can hear me. Why has no one come looking? All I said was I'm going to go to my office and eat. It's lonely in here. And my bum hurts. Good thing I have Fett's couch to sleep on. Okay. So here, I guess that got stuck in his bum. It looks like it's at the bottom end of the spine, at least. So that is the quote scrawl. Fett's furniture, not furniture. So I'm not going to read all these, but you guys can read them if you pause it. I'll flip through them. Another uh, quote scroll. There was one in mission uh, three, wasn't it? Trials that shape us, I think. No, while the city sleeps. Okay. So like I said, I just wanted to get the count for that. <gasps> so can we get back down here, you think? So we can. <laughs> Uh. 
So yeah, at either end here, there are going to be two guardians or haunts let loose. And they're going to patrol right where those crates are. So we have to get rid of those before we unleash those guardians. You can actually hear them. You can see the door on the wall here. You can lean in. Water, water splashing sounds so much louder than what it actually is. There's a certain distance away from enemies, and then they can't hear it, no matter how loud it is. So luckily that guy just walks back and forth uh, along the altar there. There are two candlesticks that we have to take there. is on this side now, so I want to wait. So we have to focus our attention on getting those candlesticks first. And then take the scales, which will set free these two enemies. They will start patrolling. They will not alert from that, but we will have to dodge them going out. But that's pretty much all we have to do is to leave afterwards.
not sure if that was an alert or not, but it could have been. No. There. So that's max loot. <clears throat> 1574 is the max for the mission. Those sounds he makes all the time, so he didn't hear that little clang. When we take the scales, there are a couple of... Well, the, the gate is going to close, the gate that we came in through. And there are two openings right underneath the floor where the scales are located. Um, two openings to a cave underneath the water. And there is a wheel that we can use to open up the gate again. There's no way you can reclose those panels that access that gate. But we do want to open the gate since we basically Do this a little bit differently. I actually want to. Do it like this. When he is on that side, because I want to go. What on earth? So there you see those. Those panels lowered, and two of those haunt like guardians are released. And jumping into the water on this side when he, when the apparition is on the other side, does not alert him. So now we checked off um, stealing the scales of Amaris. Uh, there's some changing in the lights, um, but there's no overall change. It's just a uh, it's almost like we get blinded for a little bit. Uh, there's a big sound, but there's no there's no new lights, I think, that have turned on, and nothing that's turned off, as far as I remember. Go in here. We just have to wait for that gate to open. And then we can leave. There, we should be good now. Can do this. Okay. Okay, so that unlocks them. Okay, so now they stay locked. We want to keep them locked here. I'm not sure why that... Let's 
see. Do that. Let's wait for that zombie to come by here, shall we? I think if we do this, now it's in the same position it was in. Locked it. Now what we need to do really is leave. We've done everything. I've gotten all the loot. I don't think I've gotten any supreme busts. Let me know if you've noticed any. But this mission should be perfect supreme ghostable. With the extra optional objective, which is nice. So I, I like to head through the noble wing here to leave. <clears throat> just the least trafficated area, just this one guy. So now, I like to go down here. If you drop very close to the edge here, we shouldn't trigger that zombie to wake up. No. So now I've taken the back route. I went through the noble wing down here, and I'm taking the exit that we haven't used yet. that and then leave. So now basically all we have to do is get back to the starting position and we're done. we go. Nice. So yeah, that was a successful Perfect Supreme Ghost Run of the Cure Mission 12. Stats, 58 minutes, 57 seconds, found um, 1574 loot, full loot. No pockets picked or locks picked, no backstabs or knockouts, no damage dealt taken or healing taken. Nothing and nobody killed, no Iron Beast destroyed or disabled, and we found... Oh, two out of two secrets, okay. In the original release, it was two out of one. It said two out of one secret. So that's been fixed then, but I remember that was kind of weird. And I thought maybe that was because they wanted the, the Easter Egg area to be extra super secret, 
so that if you found the one traditional one, you thought that was it, and you didn't go looking for the other one. But yeah, that's been fixed. So time so far, 10 hours, 15 minutes, 45 seconds, and we found 19,483 loot. We've dealt one damage, that's the Kadar. Somebody pointed out to me, I can't remember who it was, so I apologize for it, but in one of the comments that uh, in the Grand Hotel, you can use a gas arrow on Kadar instead, and that removes the one damage dealt. So you don't have to deal any damage for the whole campaign. I don't think the last mission has any damage dealt. No, I don't think so. So that is true, you can do that to Kadar, but that requires uh, you picking up a gas arrow. I don't think you start with a gas arrow in that mission. So you have to pick it up, and that's an unnecessary pickup. Uh, so that is is not required, or you're not required to pick up an item, so then it, that makes it unnecessary. You are required to incapacitate him somehow, so the one damage dealt then is is okay, because knocking or blackjacking him is, is assumed by the objective. So I'm not sure if it would be, be a bust to pick up the gas arrow if you chose to go that route, but I didn't choose that, but you can do that, yes. All right, next mission is back to Thief 2. We're going to do Masks, uh, which is a much better mission than Casing the Joint. So I'll see you guys back then. In the meantime, stay safe and have a good day. Bye-bye.